Hello, so this is going to be a video about protection from nuclear fallout and radiation. And um, basically, the reason I wanted to do this video is I think a lot of people assume it's like a video game where you've got some sort of HUD that tells you how irradiated you are, how radioactive the environment is and all things like that. And in reality, it doesn't work like that at all, obviously. So what I thought I'd cover in this video is protecting yourself as best you can, because there's only a certain level you can actually protect yourself from radiation when you know, some sort of horrible event does happen and it's everywhere um, and sort of some of the gear that helps you monitor it know how much you're coming into contact with, what your accumulated dose might be and protective clothing you can wear obviously to minimise the risks so the main thing you'll notice that we'll probably talk the majority of this video about is Geiger counters and decimeters and sort of iron chamber devices because um, lots of people confuse these and they're not all the same sort of thing so on the very left of the screen, we have the US CD V7 V. Sorry, I'll start that again. The US CD V715 ion chamber, also known as a survey meter, that is for measuring incredibly high levels of radiation. Uh, and when we talk about radiation, of course, we mean ionizing radiation, not mobile phone radiation or anything like that. We're on about or heat radiation. We're on about ionizing radiation, as in alpha, beta, gamma, and X-rays. In the middle we have the Polish DP-75, um, that's the one B-Store sent me, and that is basically a Geiger counter that can do both very low and high levels. Because what you'll find, um, like with the US CDV-700 on the right there, is that's a very accurate Geiger counter for low levels of radiation, but it can't tell you high levels. Then in the middle underneath, a little white Geiger counter, that's the one Hype sent me, and he's got some of these for sale now, so I'll link to his eBay page where he's selling them. Um, and that's sort of like a very generic Chinese little small Geiger counter similar to, uh, similar, sorry, to a SOEX sort of unit where it's got a combined decimeter and Geiger counter function. So that's quite practical. What I'll also get out in a minute is show you the decimeter pen that the DP75 can charge up and how that works. And then obviously in the foreground there's a 40mm respirator um, and I'll get onto that and clean suits, NBC suits and everything in a minute. And the ammo can in the back contains the radioactive materials. So what I'm going to do now is um, sort of start irradiating things and show you what happens. Okay, so let's look at some of the bits down here. So I'm going to flick on all of these. I'll just do the zero function on this one. Although I think it's pretty good from last time I zeroed it. We'll flick on this one. And we'll flick on this one. So basically, and this one is already on, but it's just the screen's gone into power saving mode. So if I do that, there you go, you can see the screen. Right, so how all these devices work, and this is a decimeter pen, is all of these devices measure radiation in some way or another, although it varies from device to device. An ion chamber unit uses what's called an ionization chamber, which is the simplest type of way of identifying radiation. Basically, when gamma rays go into the chamber, um, it creates a circuit, and that is used to uh, create a reading. Um, the Geiger counter uses a Geiger probe or a GM tube inside the probe um, and that basically measures radiation. It's a lot more sensitive to low levels than an ion chamber is typically, although again it always depends on manufacturers how they've done it, what sort of devices they're using. And that is the US CDV 700 um, 6B model, which is a low range unit. Now, the problem with a lot of these devices, not talking about this one, but this one, this one and this one, is they show you what you're currently experiencing in terms of a dose. So as you see the needle move on there and there every now and then, that is per hour what your dose would be if you stayed in that exact area. The problem is they don't show you what you've accumulated. Um, that's where this sort of device is different, and that's thanks, I guess, modern digital sort of things that can do that. So what you can see there is it says what the current micro sievert level is, which is much higher than background because I've got the check sources out around it. And there it shows you your accumulative dose. So since you last turned it on, what have you been exposed to? Now the old fashioned way of doing that was a decimeter pen. How these work is you charge them on your decimeter and set them to zero. That's when they're fully charged. As radiation enters them, it drains the battery. As the battery drains, um, you know, the radiation dose shown increases. Very simple but very effective. Um, if you actually take these apart, they're not so simple but Fundamentally, it is pretty simple. You know, it's a battery and some components in there that have a nice eyepiece you look through. So, the problem with radiation is you can have it around you and you have no way of knowing. 
But you can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't taste it, you know. None of your senses, you can't hear it, none of your senses are aware it's there. So at the moment, you know, you might be looking at that and say, hmm, there's no radiation, right? And so a good example of that is this World War II um, aircraft RAF dial, which was painted with radium paint, very radioactive. So you look at that, it looks perfectly normal. You know, you could stare at it all day, it wouldn't do you any good, but you wouldn't know. So what we're going to do is, and this is another thing I need to point out, the iron chambers, because they're designed for higher levels of radiation, quite often if you put something like this near it, you won't see anything happen. Um, where, you know, this is very good for high levels, with low levels you could be getting irradiated and not know about it. So, now we've got this aircraft dial, let's put it facing the probe here, this Geiger counter there, and we'll put the CDV probe here as well. I'm going to try and arrange these so you can see all of them in frame. It doesn't help, does it, my legs there, but, um, so let's put that there. Right, so what you should see happen in a moment, if I put that there, is you should probably see that one, when he wants to start working. I'm not sure he's not working, he might need a new battery, hang on. Hmm, interesting. But you, what you can see, actually, is the DP75 is working. So what I'm just going to do is turn this one off a second and sort the batteries out because he was working fine yesterday and now all of a sudden he doesn't seem to want to respond because he definitely should be getting a reading from that. Let me just open the beta probe and see. Oh, it did something then. Let's just try one of the different radiation levels. No, I think he's going to need new batteries so I'll sort that out in a minute. Right. But yeah, if we look at the DP75 for now, you can see if I put this dial on there, oop, the needle shot up. So then let's go to the next setting, we can zero it, see where the dial stops. On about two, so two millirentgen per hour in terms of gamma radiation. Now, with a lot of these, they also, as you know if you've seen videos on them, have a thing called a beta detector for beta radiation or beta radiation, however you pronounce it, um, and there it is there. So when this shield is over it, it only detects gamma because it's the most penetrating. With this open it can detect beta. Now if I do this here, the glass on this actually stops a lot of the beta, but if I take this off very carefully and expose the radium paint directly to the um, probe, you'll see something very different. So here we go, have a look at that, I'll pull that forwards a bit so it might be a bit easier to read. And ooh, off the scale, tell you what, I can just put this down there, like that. So let's go up to the next scale, zero it. See him climbing up there? If I get the probe and put it closer. Off the scale again. Let's go to half a ronken per hour at the top. So yeah, it's given off something like 100 millirontgen per hour of radiation, which is very high. Here's an extracted bit of radium paint. If I put that on there, that's also going to be very high. Um, I don't know if it's actually higher or not as high in quantity like that, but... The point is, you know, if you had this sort of stuff laying around, you could be getting irradiated and not know about it. Obviously, this tells you that there is radiation there. So there's that. So, but the point is, you know, to prove that when these devices are working, you will find out if you're being irradiated when you otherwise couldn't tell. Similarly, if I get this device, uh, let's put him on, let's just put him onto the plane dial like that, and what you should start seeing is the number shooting right up in a moment, as well as the accumulative dose as well. There we go, it's gone to 15. What will happen is this one, obviously, because it's a digital display, kind of jumps. That, and that's the same with all sort of Geiger counters with digital displays. They tend to jump around quite a bit. Um, because obviously with a needle, the needle's just kind of moving smoothly up and down. And you're limited by having to use the switches. On this, it's basically when the digital display, I guess, jumps to the next bit of its display. Um, but as you can see, that will go up and up and up. And if I, for example, put this here like that, then put the... Um, radium sort of extract there 
I can get that to balance, I can just pop it there and work as well because it's pretty strong um, stuff. It's up to 66 now. I'm just going to turn the CDB back on again and see if he wants to work. Oh, he looks like he might be doing something now. Hang on. I wonder if it's the wire that's a bit loose. Yeah, it is. Okay, it's. I need to do some electrical tape or resolder the wire on here, that's all it is. If we go up to the 100 times scale, what you'll see on this is that if he wants to work again, and I get him back in frame. Just wiggle that wire until he works. There we go. He's gone off the scale. So another limitation of some of these Geiger counters is, obviously, that they're limited by the scale of them. Um, whereas, you know, in a video game or whatever, your in-game HUD tells you however high it goes. Lots of these in reality rely on batteries, obviously. You're limited to how high or low the counter itself can go. Um, and as you can see on this one now, we are up to 146. So, um, yeah, that's in a different unit, by the way. This thing runs on... Tell you what, if I stand him up like that, he's probably going to be across the thing more than if I um, had him laying down. But yeah, so the point is that, obviously, in reality, these things are often limited to, um, you know, their internal battery, what they can display up to and everything like that. Whereas, um, you know, in a video game, they just work all the time, don't they, and you immediately know. Um, but as you can see, you know, that's going up and up and up. But if you're just like me and holding this stuff normally, you would have no idea just how hot this stuff potentially is. Um, so, you know, there you go. That gives you some idea. So, I'm going to put all this stuff away now, and then we'll talk a bit about respirators and dust suits. Okay, now, so let's quickly talk about sort of respirators and clean suits, dust suits, NBC suits. So the point of these suits isn't that they actually keep out radiation in a sense, it's the radioactive dust is basically trapped on the outside of the suit, so you can decontaminate yourself very easily. And as for respirators, if you ingest or inhale radioactive particles, they go into your lungs or stomach or whatever and then do a lot more damage internally than they would do externally, especially if it's an alpha or beta source, because they can obviously, because they don't penetrate very far, if they're inside you, hitting your organs 24-7, they're doing a lot more damage than if you're out there, if they're outside you, sort of being stopped by the skin or only going a little bit into the skin. So, that about wraps it up. Um, you know, the point is, you need a way of measuring radiation. If you can't see it, can't taste it, and you need stuff to protect yourself from it. So, there'll be links in the description to B-Store and Hype's eBay pages where they've got some of these sort of Geiger counters, decimeters, and all that sort of stuff on sale. Um, obviously NBC suits, gas masks and things like that as well. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of this video is more to point out, you know, the problem where people sort of seem to somehow magically, oh, I'll know what radiation levels there are. You know, you won't without the proper equipment.